In this ultimate guide, I'll show you how to write a Phrygian mode song. I'll start by discussing chord progressions, then melodies, and finally riffs. You don't have to write a song in this order, but it provides a logical framework for teaching and is easy to follow. Throughout the video, I'll create an entire Phrygian mode song. This will allow you to see how the parts of the song work together as a whole. After watching this entire video, you'll have everything you need to write a complete Phrygian mode song. Let's begin with chord progressions. The Phrygian mode has a distinctive, intense and dark minor sound. Because of this, Phrygian is often used in metal music to provide an evil or exotic edge. Listen to how it sounds here with the E Phrygian scale, which has the notes E, F, G, A, B, C and D. Compare this to the E natural minor slash aeolian mode. You can see that there's one note of difference, F sharp. This is the second scale degree of the natural minor scale. In the Phrygian mode, this is a flat or minor second scale degree. This note will be vital in defining the Phrygian chord progressions I show you later on. It is what provides a lot of the distinctive Phrygian mode sound. You can use the notes from a scale or mode to create a series of chords. These chords are what make up a key in songwriting. The most basic chords are constructed with three notes and are called triads. They will be either major, minor, diminished or augmented. Let's use the E Phrygian scale I showed you earlier to construct some chords. To create the first chord, take the first note, which is E here, and then skip a note, which takes you to G, and then skip a note from G, which gets you to B. These three notes will create a triad. In this case, E, G and B create E minor. This is the one chord. Then you move on to the next note and start again. In E Phrygian, the next note is F. If you skip a note from F, you have A. Skip a note from A and you get to C. F, A and C create a F major chord. This becomes your two chord. You then repeat the process for the remaining notes of the Phrygian mode to generate a set of seven chords. Note how I have repeated the notes twice here to make constructing the chords easy to visualize. This gives you the following chords. One E minor, two F major, major, 3 G major, 4 A minor, 5 B diminished, 6 C major and 7 D minor. These are the diatonic chords in the E Phrygian key. That is chords that are made purely with notes from the E Phrygian scale. E Phrygian is a good key for guitar players because it has lots of chords that can be played as simple open chords. It is also popular on the piano because you just use the white notes. You can see that each of the diatonic chords has a Roman numeral above it. Lowercase indicates minor chords and uppercase major chords. This helps you to understand chord progressions as the Roman numerals can apply to any Phrygian key and simply indicate the function of the chords. Let's start building some Phrygian mode chord progressions now and look at how you can write your own. Critical to creating Phrygian sounding chord progressions is to use chords that have the flat or minor second note in them. As you saw earlier, this is the only note that is separating Phrygian from Aeolian. So if you want to make clear what mode you are in, then keep coming back to chords with that defining note. The basic Phrygian triads that have the flat second note in them are two, five and seven. Let's start with a one, two, one, seven progression. Progression like this will fully anchor you in the Phrygian mode. This is because it goes from the tonic chord to chords that contain the flat second note that I have discussed. It also mixes minor and major triads nicely. Want some more keys to try out along with Phrygian? Seven easy songwriting keys are available to make your chord progression writing a breeze. Don't waste any more time searching. Go to majorkeychords.com now and download your free guide today. Link is also in the description. This next progression introduces the three chord. The use of mainly major chords colors the sound of this progression, but you still have the two chord to keep things Phrygian. Note how the chords rise in number order. This is referred to as the escalator effect. This can also work in a descending direction from high numbers to low numbers. Doing this is a great way to build up to a new song section or high point. Just be aware that the more you do it, the less impact it has in a song. Here are a 
couple more common progressions that use ideas I've discussed so far to produce a Phrygian sound. Listen out for the four chord in the second half, introducing another minor chord to the sound palette. So far I've not used two chords in the examples, 5 and 6. The 6 chord is a major chord which you are familiar with. The 5 chord is a diminished chord. Diminished chords have an unsettled tension that makes them less common in popular major key songs. Listen to both of these chords in action in the next example. Also note the use of inversions of the 1 chord here. You saw at the beginning of the video that each chord was constructed with 3 notes. Usually the lowest note in the chord is the root note, where the chord letter comes from. If you play one of the other notes as the lowest, then you create a chord inversion. Each triad has two possible inversions. The bass note is indicated with the letter after the slash. Inversions are useful for creating interesting bass lines with your chord progressions. I've started with a second inversion 1 chord to begin this progression. This puts the B note as the lowest. This creates a stepwise rising bass line in the first half, B, C, D, E. Listen out for the 6 chord and also the difference between the 2nd inversion 1 chord and the standard 1 chord. In the second half of the progression I start with the diminished 5 chord. Listen how it doesn't sound out of place because it uses the same bass note as the 2nd inversion 1 chord but it clearly has an unsettled tension. The bass line in the final 4 bars goes B A G F. This utilises a 1st inversion 1 chord to create a descending feel. So far I've only used basic triads in the Phrygian progressions, but you are of course free to use different chord types in your Phrygian songs. You can experiment with this on any of the chords, but where it is particularly interesting is in introducing or emphasising the flat second note from the mode. As you understand now, this will reinforce the Phrygian sound. There are many ways to do this, so what I discuss here won't be exhaustive. Let's start by taking the 3 chord and turning it into a dominant 7th. This adds the flat second note from the scale to the 3 chord major triad. Here it is at the end of a progression. See how it pulls you back to the 1 chord. Three of the chords in the previous progression have a flat second note, so there's no question that this is in Phrygian. But one way you can emphasise this even more is by using the first inversion of the 7 minor chord. This puts the flat second note in the base of the 7 chord to make it stand out. In this example, it leads into the 2 chord. If you change the 6 chord into a sus4 chord, then it introduces the flat 2nd to yet another chord. The use of the sus4 adds a completely different feel to this progression, which may not be associated with the Phrygian sound. I'll now put some of what you've learned into a full song example. The song will feature chord durations that aren't just one per bar. This will provide some more interest compared to the examples. It has an intro verse chorus break, verse chorus break, 
chorus outro structure. Sections are generally four or eight bars to keep things simple, but you can experiment with different lengths in your own song. It starts in the intro with the one and two chords. These set up the Phrygian sound for the song and anchors the listener in the key. They also introduce the rhythmic setup that will run throughout the song. The first two chords are heard for 1.5 beats or a dotted quarter note. These offbeat changes bring some interesting syncopation to the progression. Then a brief one beat or quarter note chord is heard at the end of bar one. This section ends with the three dominant seventh chord to draw us into the verse. The verses focus primarily on the minor chords. They start with a second inversion four chord. This shares a bass note with the one chord E minor, which is heard in the next bar. This provides a pleasing beginning to the verse. They are also one bar each to settle things down after the intro. Then the seven chord is heard before the signature rhythm is brought back, this time using first inversion four chord and second inversion one chords. This means I get more mileage out of the three minor chords in the key, but it also provides a descending bass line for the verse from E to D to C to B. The verse then repeats again, but the final two chords are changed. First is the diminished five chord. This brings some pleasing discordance to the song. But because it has the same bass note as the second inversion one chord from the fourth bar of the verse, it doesn't sound out of place. The final chord this time uses the seven D minor. This provides a step up leading towards the one chord E minor at the start of the chorus. Where the verse was minor focused, the chorus is major focused. It has a slightly different rhythmic feel, starting with the one chord for three beats or a dotted half note. Then the three major chords are heard to build a rising escalator to the first two bars. Then the chorus settles on the tense five chord for a bar before stepping down to the four chord A minor. The final beat of the fourth bar of the chorus uses a first inversion six chord to step back to the bass note E of the one chord. This whole thing repeats twice. At the end of the chorus is a four bar break, which is heard before the verse comes back in. The break uses the rhythmic setup from the intro to continue this thread running through the song. The whole bar chords two and three dominant seventh remain the same. The difference is with the use of the six chord and the six sus four. This brings a different feel to the break to separate it from the rest of the song. The sections then repeat again until you get to the outro. The first four bars of the outro are the same as the break. The change comes in the final four bars. After hearing C and C sus4 again, the signature rhythm is used, but this time with the one chord and the first inversion of the one chord. This sets up a rising one, two, three section to finish the song on some expectation. The two chord alternates with the second inversion two to reinforce the rhythm before ending again on the three dominant seven and then the one chord. Follow along and listen to the different techniques and ideas and then have a go at writing your own Phrygian chord progressions.
Now I'll show you how to write a melody for your song. Listen to how it sounds here with the E Phrygian scale, which has the notes E, F, G, A, B, C and D. Compare this to the E natural minor slash Aeolian mode. You can see that there's one note of difference, F sharp. This is the second scale degree of the natural minor scale. In the Phrygian mode, this is a flat or minor second scale degree. This note will be vital in defining the Phrygian sound in the melody examples. Phrygian is a minor sounding scale. This is because it has a flat third note in it. As such, I'll add this to the list of notes to highlight in the melody to create a Phrygian sound. I'll use these two notes now in an example in the key of E Phrygian. These are F and G. I'll also use the root or tonic note E to spell out the key. Here's a very simple melody that highlights these notes. You want to focus on these notes to bring out the Phrygian flavour, but what else can you do to achieve this? If you play notes on a strong beat, then they are felt more and stand out. In a 4-4 time signature, with 4 beats in a bar, this would be beats 1 and 3, with the first beat being the strongest. Listen to the following example. In bars 1 and 2, the flat 3 and flat 2 notes, G and F, are on weak beats. In the second half, they fall on the strong beats 1 and 3. I want to give you a few basic melody tips now. The main tip would be to keep it simple. In most styles of music, vocal melodies are repetitive, simple and cover a limited range. Don't overcomplicate your melodies and you won't go far wrong. For example, look at this basic melody in E Phrygian. When creating melodies, it is important to consider the shape of the pattern. Melodies can move downwards or upwards in small steps or big leaps. This can take you into different octaves. Balancing the movement or shape of the melody is another important part of creating and maintaining interest. Look out for the leaps and steps into different octaves in the next Phrygian example. I said that placing a note on the strong beat can make it stand out. Another thing that can highlight a particular note is making it the highest note in a phrase. This could be used to highlight a key note in your Phrygian melody, or if you have lyrics, it could be to showcase an important word. In the next example, I'll end each phrase with the flat three and flat two notes, G and F, that I highlighted as being key to the Phrygian sound. Melodies don't live in isolation, they have a strong relationship with harmony, or in other words, chord progressions. Let's now look at how this relationship works. A melody can be written from two broad approaches. You can write the melody first, and then fit chords to the melody. Or you can write the chords first, and then the melody. The second approach is the most common, probably because it is easy to strum chords on a guitar, or play them on a piano, and then sing along. If you look at a lot of popular songs, you'll see how the chords directly influence the melody with the choice of notes. If you have an existing Phrygian chord progression, you can start with this and create a melody for it. You can of course use the tips and ideas already discussed, but now you have a few more things to consider. The easiest way to build a melody from chords is just to use chord notes. Each chord will be constructed with several notes, and whilst that chord is playing, you can use these notes to create a melody. For example, a popular Phrygian chord progression is 1, 2, 1, 7. In the key of E Phrygian, these chords would be E minor, F major, and D minor. E minor has the notes E, G, and B. F major is constructed with F, A, and C, and D minor uses the notes D, F, and A. In the next example, I'll construct a melody using only these chord tones.
Now I'll use the same chord progression, but instead of chord notes, I'll use the other four notes from the E Phrygian mode. This group of four notes will change as the chords change. Chord note melody feels really safe, and if you place these notes on the strong beats in the bar, it feels even safer. Notes from outside of the chord sound tenser and unsettled. The level of tension depends on several factors. If it's in the scale of the key, then it will have some tension, with different levels within this. And then if you want greater tension, you can reach out for chromatic or alien notes. Writing a melody is a balancing act, building up tension and then resolving it by selecting these different notes. So far all the melody examples have used quarter notes that fall on one of the four beats in a bar. This is fine for some of your melody, but over the course of a song it can become predictable and boring. A lot of melodies utilise syncopation to generate a more rhythmic interest. Earlier in the video I discussed the role of strong and weak beats in a bar. Syncopation is where the weak beats in a bar are accented rather than the usual strong beats. And if you utilise notes that don't fall on any of the beats, then they will feel even more syncopated. You can put a rest and avoid notes where the strong beat falls to further create a syncopated feel. In the next example, I'll use a more syncopated rhythm for the melody. I'll use a mixture of chord and non-chord tones played over a 1-3-7-2 progression. Also listen out for a common technique where notes are held over chord changes. This is usually done with a shared chord tone to provide a pleasing bridge to smooth out the change. In this example I use the B note to move from E minor in bar 1 to G major in bar 2. Both chords contain this note. You'll see the notes in the underlying chords highlighted throughout, so you can see how the melody mixes chord and non-chord tones. Follow along, listen to the melody, and then have a go at writing your own Phrygian melody. Now it's time to talk about riffs. A riff is a short, repeated, memorable musical phrase. Although strongly associated with rock music and the electric guitar, a riff can feature in any genre and be played on any instrument. The majority of riffs are between 1 and 4 bars in length. Any longer can sound like a melody or solo. All riffs are repeated. This is an essential part of the riff and how they hook themselves into the listener's mind. You could also call them a motif. That is, a musical idea that repeats. 
A riff can define a song. The first thing you hear in many songs is a riff, and they are a core part of many massive hits. Riffs are like a whole song, bundled up into a short, repeatable package. As such, they are comprised of three main parts. Rhythm, harmony, and melody. I'll use the E Phrygian scale now to demonstrate some different riff ideas. I'll present guitar tabs for the riffs, but remember that these ideas can apply to any instrument or MIDI. Tabs were created in Guitar Pro. There's a link in the description if you'd like to try out Guitar Pro for yourself. E Phrygian is a guitar friendly key. In standard tuning, you can play any of the open strings without being out of key. As such, it can open up all sorts of easy to play riff ideas. Almost anything can be a riff, but for ease, I'm going to break them into a few categories here to help you think about the different riff approaches. The sound or genre that you are aiming for may dictate the riff styles that you prefer. As always, trust your ear and go with it. Let's start with some interval based riffs. An interval is simply the distance between two notes. Intervals are the building blocks of chords and scales. As such, they are a great point to construct a riff from. The bulk of guitar riffs are played on the lower three strings. The E, A and D strings have power and authority associated with bass notes as the bass generally defines the harmony above it. Denser strings also produce more volume. Because of this, I'll focus on these lower registers in the examples. If you're working with a scale, such as E Phrygian here, you can experiment by playing two notes in the scale that create an interval you like the sound of. Once you find the interval you like, then you can work on the rhythmic idea for your riff. For example, here's a simple riff using two notes in the E Phrygian scale, E and F. This interval is a distance of one semitone or half step. This is known as a minor second. It has a classic dissonant sound that you will recognize. A certain film about a shark might come to mind. I'll play the interval and then develop the rhythm of the riff. So much of the riff writing process is experimentation. Intervals can be played horizontally like you just saw. This is what you would find in a melody. Or you can stack them vertically. This is when both notes are played at the same time. This is how chords are created. In the next example, I'll play notes from the E Phrygian scale at the same time. Listen to how this changes the sound. Each interval will have an open E note in it. Repeating a note like this in a riff is known as a pedal note. I'll discuss this in more detail later. Look out again for the development of the rhythm of in this example. <laughs> I've shown you some of the notes in E Phrygian, but what creates the Phrygian sound? At the beginning of the video, I explained how the only point of difference between the Phrygian scale and the natural minor scale slash Aeolian mode is the flat second note. So this note is critical to the Phrygian sound. You also want to highlight that Phrygian has a minor sound or quality. This is heard through the use of the flat third note and also the root note of the scale so you know where the tonic or home is. Here's an example that highlights these notes in the E Phrygian scale, E, F and G. It starts with these three key notes with particular emphasis on the E and F to highlight the flat second. It then introduces some more notes, repeating the rhythmic end of the first bar to provide some cohesion across the riff. The root note E is the lowest in the riff to highlight its role as the tonic. Let's talk now about pedal note riffs. A pedal note is one that remains the same, usually low down in the arrangement, whilst other notes or chords change above it. This will usually use open E, A and D strings on the guitar. If the note doesn't sustain throughout the riff, it may also be referred to as a pedal point. It will often be the root note of the relevant scale that is repeated to really anchor the listener in the key of the song, but it doesn't have to be, so feel free to experiment. If you've heard metal riffs with palm muted E strings throughout, they are an example of this. This might be one reason to try a drop tuning, like drop D, to get a suitable open note to pedal throughout your riff. You saw an example earlier that had a pedal note. Here's one in E Phrygian that again uses the E open string, but also the F and G notes I want to touch. Target. Now it's time for a classic riff component, the power chord. A favourite of rock and metal, the power chord is a simple, powerful element in many iconic riffs. A power chord is actually just the perfect fifth interval, so it relates back to the first two examples in this video. Power chords are often used with pedal notes that I discussed previously. This is particularly prevalent in metal riffs. 
On guitar, they are usually played as two note chords, with the first and fifth, or as a three note chord with the octave added above the fifth. If using a distorted guitar sound, you might also find other techniques used with power chords, such as palm muting and slides. A simple starting point for generating power chord riffs is to use the notes in the relevant scale for your song, and then using each note as a root note for a power chord. As with other riffs, the rhythmic element is almost more important than the actual chords being played. Here's an example in E Phrygian using power chords and other single note lines. The power chord riff leads us nicely into the full blown chord riff. As the name suggests, this is simply combining full chords into a riff. This is where the lines between chord progression and riff can become blurred, but as discussed earlier, the riff will be shorter and more rhythmically driven than a chord progression. Chord based riffs are easy to have a go at, just pick one or more chords from a key and start experimenting with the rhythm. For example, here are the diatonic chords in the key of E Phrygian. If you want to learn more about Phrygian key chords and progressions, there will be a link at the end of this video. A simple and popular chord progression uses the 1 chord E minor, the 2 chord F major, and the 7 chord D minor. Let's take these chords as the basis of our riff. You can use simple chords like this but you are not limited. Different chord types can open up interesting sounds and on the guitar they can be the simple addition or taking away of a finger. This can add rhythmic elements that help elevate us beyond the chord progression. In the next example I explore this idea by using E minor 7 and D sus 2. The rhythmic variations are short enough to feel like a riff and not a progression. Riff can come into the songwriting process at different times. It could be that you create a great riff in isolation and that inspires you to write the rest of a song. Remember that they contain rhythm, melody and harmony. This song DNA can be unpicked from the riff and lead to quick songwriting. Concentrate on the notes that are emphasised or stand out. These will lead you to suggested chord changes. You could also take an existing chord progression and turn this into a riff. This might be by using chord notes or whole chords as you saw earlier. Or you could take a song melody and use it for your riff inspiration. This is particularly useful for finding rhythmic hooks for your riff. Sometimes starting with some limitations can really help your riff writing process as it narrows down infinite possibilities to focus your attention. It starts with a 4 bar intro, which I want to create a riff for. The riff revolves around an E pedal note, and it's simple in its nature. The first two bars repeat, but rise up to a delayed D note over the G major 7th chord. The riff is reprised over the break sections. Listen to how the riff sounds different over the changed chords. Any other instruments played at the same time as your riffs will colour the sound, so make sure you experiment with your riff in the arrangement you are intending for your song. Have a listen to how the riff sounds, building up repetition, as well as the rest of the song. I hope this will inspire you to have a go at writing your own Phrygian mode riffs.
You've learned how to write a Phrygian mode song, but there's a world of songwriting out there. Watch the playlist on screen now to continue your songwriting journey.